What's up, Ada Nation? Welcome to Dapp Central, your home for everything blockchain and crypto. My name is Fareed. As a part of today's video, I'm excited to share with you guys some very positive news when it comes to the official audit report or the audit findings for USDM, a fiat backed stable coin aiming to launch on Cardano in less than 20 days. This launch has been highly anticipated. We did see them temporarily pushed back their launch date from December 19th over to March 16th. Now, I just released a 13-minute deep dive into the latest standings for Mahen and exactly how things are progressing. So please make sure to check out that video. I highlight their smart contract audit being done in collaboration with the Sunday Swap or the Sunday Labs team, as well as whether or not the team feels confident that they'll be able to hit that March 16th timeline. Following that, I do jump into up updates surrounding Project Catalyst, as well as Chain Race, and I talk a little bit about some potential regulatory hurdles. Now, I want to take a moment here to quickly plug in their monthly newsletter as well as their Medium articles. So if you guys are not already subscribed, I'll leave the link to those down below. But this basically keeps you updated with everything going on with Mahen. Now, what I want to break down today will be the report findings at a very high level. This is a 42 page document, again, conducted by the Sunday Labs team. And as always, if you do enjoy updates like these, please make sure to smash that thumbs up. If it's your first time stopping by, consider subscribing. And last but not least, if you have any questions for me, then please leave them down below. Now, before we actually jump into the actual findings, I want to quickly just remind you guys of some of the initial um, concerns that were raised by the Sunday Labs team and exactly what the Mahens team's goal were in order to resolve those issues. So this is done and this was reported in their um, January update, which I'll leave a link to down below. But it states here that once they were able to get that first audit over um, from the Sunday Swap team, there were two major things that they wanted to go ahead and highlight. Now, the actual findings or the actual report does break down some other things, but I believe these were two of the most critical findings, which of course the team has now acknowledged and they've also resolved them. So the first was to introduce multi-sig and time delay mechanisms. So this was basically in order to mitigate risks, to not allow for the Mahen team or the USDM team, or even just a bad actor, right? To make protocol level changes and have those be implemented immediately. So this acts almost as a safety gap in order to make sure that if something is changed inappropriately or by accident, that the team has enough time to catch that and revert or undo that change, right? Before it's actually implemented with the actual protocol. So it states that that ensures that any significant modifications to the protocol undergoes thorough scrutiny and provides ample time for the community to react, thereby preventing hasty or malicious actions. Now, the second major thing that the USDM team was aiming to update was with respect to the upgradability of the token. If you've been within the space for any amount of time, you've probably experienced V1 and V2 versions of particular tokens for a project or protocol. And while it's okay to do this, it does serve and it does cause fragmentation with respect to liquidity. So you could imagine if you hold V1 of a token, you have to upgrade to V2. Not only do you have to understand how to upgrade where there may be some sort of knowledge gap where you lose your assets, but there's also fragmentation of liquidity given the fact that not everybody may have actually upgraded from V1 to V2. Now with something like a staple coin, you want to avoid this as much as possible because you want this to be a long lasting asset with a lot of liquidity and a lot of holders within the ecosystem. So this team wants to make sure that moving forward, if they have to change the Oracle provider or just any metadata associated with the actual USDM token, that they don't have to go back to the board and create an entirely brand new policy in order to do that. So it states here that based on guidance from the Sunday Labs team, they were able to, they are aiming, excuse me, to future-proof USDM by introducing mutable and upgradable elements, which allows for the team to make changes on the tokens on-chain controls without actually having to change the policy ID. So now that we better understand the two sort of critical things that the team wanted to update, I want to highlight this tweet that was released by the official Sunday Swap team um, about six or seven hours ago. So it states here that they're now happy to release this official report. They've got a USDM policy ID there. They've got some control delays and they've also got an official token name. Jumping over here, I want to quickly highlight the fact that you can get access to this report. I'll leave it linked down below and just kind of kicking things off here. They have a really nice thorough set of contents or a table of contents here 
followed by some of the audit manifest. Now this breaks down all the policy IDs, all the NFTs, and all the parameters associated with the Mahan protocol. One thing to note here is that with respect to the control delay, which I highlighted earlier, which was one of the major things I wanted to change, they've now added a 14 day timer before any change made to the core protocol is, is actually taken into effect. Again, keep in mind that the team can change this particular parameter, and that was actually one of the things that they added as a part of this latest update or this latest round of audit changes. So scrolling down, um, they do break down some of the formal specifications, some of their underlying understandings, and then the business rules and then definitions. So this breaks down, you know, what a Mahan asset is, what an owner is, what a minter is, what a distributor is, what the circulating supply is, um, everything that you need to know specifically surrounding the Mahan protocol. Now, scrolling down to the most important part here, which is the finding summary, I want to quickly go ahead and highlight what was updated, what was acknowledged, and potentially what remains, right, in terms of not actually being changed. So when it comes to the actual protocol delay, which I highlighted as one of the bigger findings, that was marked as a major severity, and that has not been resolved. With respect to the upgradability of the token, that was also marked as severe, and that has been resolved. And there was one other item here, which wasn't necessarily mentioned in their Medium post surrounding commitments to upgrade actions, which has also been resolved. Everything else following that is marked as minor, so there are no critical findings, which is extremely positive to hear. Um, in terms of just the order, it goes from critical to major to minor and then info. And then I believe there's one more category towards the bottom, but the fact that there's only three major and all three of those have been resolved is extremely positive and shows that the Mahen team has done what they can in order to listen and then fix all the findings from the first audit. Now they do have some additional things down there, um, such as the effect of accidental burns, potential locking of the protocol, potential abuse of the burn bridges, which again, some of those have been acknowledged and some of those have been resolved. So I think that'll really do it there. Again, I want to just quickly touch on the findings. They do break down exactly um, what was done for each of the findings. So if you want to find out a little bit more about that, that is listed here within the actual report. So as I mentioned, brief update here. Um, this, I believe, will be allowing for the team to wrap up milestone number three, because again, they have been funded by Project Catalyst receiving, I believe, over 800,000 ADA. So now that they're wrapped up with this particular milestone, they'll be heading into the final stretch as we have less than 20 days into the official mainnet launch of USDM. That'll do it here for today's brief update. If you guys did enjoy, let me know what you guys think down below. If you've gotten a chance to actually review the report, let me know what your thoughts are as well. And then last but not least, if you have any questions or comments or you just want to state your opinion, then leave a comment down below. That said, and as always, I'll see you guys in the next video.